it was the most obvious thing. Nobody had to tell me nothing. I walked into the presence of death. They're yelling, let me out, I'm a Christian. They're thinking I'm a Christian as he passes by them. The toughest Satan worshiper guy that goes there is just gonna cry like a little girl. Like just to see a people just goes out forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. You're the reason that we're in hell, you big fat liar. Come down here so we can knock you out, beat you up and make you pay. And the one that stood out was like a young girl and she even had a teddy bear in a, in a dress. And she looks up at him and she says, Daddy, why did you lie to us? And somehow or another, I realized the next section is where I go. Hello and welcome back to the Almost False Podcast where I interview regular people with incredible stories. Today's guest had an out-of-body experience a few years ago where he died and went to hell. His name is Cody and he shared his experience with me in an impressive amount of detail. He also talked about seeing a very famous religious leader while he was there. So stick around to the end to find out who it is. It's a wild one. So strap on your seatbelts and join me as we immerse ourselves in this story with Cody. I just got into drugs at a really young age, like 10 years old, kind of. My parents just didn't know about it, nor did they expect it. Nobody's thinking that a 10 year old smoke a pot or anything, you know? So it's pretty easy to hide. And my neighborhood had some people in it that were uh, pretty gangster or whatever, if you want to call it that. And uh, I just spent a lot of time over at their houses, you know what I mean? And because of that, I'd be drinking with them and then I'd, feel, I'd be convicted. And then I'd go up and I'd tell them about, hey, we need to stay sober. It says in the Bible, whoop de whoop. So growing up in a Christian home and knowing about the power of God, the power of the name of Jesus, having demons messing with me since as far back as I can remember, you know, not even sleeping with my light, with my light off, you know, I have my light on, my door open, you know, when I go to sleep up till like probably 17, 18, honestly. Um, so like having all this torment and stuff coming against me, knowing the power of Jesus, knowing that this stuff is all in the Bible is all real. The only way, the only way for me to experience sex or drugs or partying or doing anything that everybody else is doing is to fully straight up just say, I'm going to rebel and I'm going to do what's wrong on purpose. And it led eventually to one night where it's not per Percocets, but it was methadone. You said that you did way too much of it. And that's when it all started. Yeah. Well, I ended, I ended up on heroin. And then when you're withdrawing and you get so sick, man, you're no longer going to work. You're no longer doing nothing, nor do you care what falls apart. You're just, all you care about is feeling better. It's, it takes full priority when you're withdrawing off this stuff. So, um, woke up, crushed up about five perk tens. I snorted them up. I ate the other 10 of them. Give me 15 perk ten or not per uh, methadone tens. So after I took the 15 methadone tens, I'm just milling around. This is when Obama was getting everybody on employment. So I'm not, I'm not, I don't have to work and I'm getting checks in the mail and I'm just doing whatever I want to do. And, uh, I went into the kitchen and I know I, re I remembered that I, I seen my bottle of Everclear somebody gave me. So I just, I'm like, Hey, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna drink today, I guess. I don't know. I ain't doing nothing else. So I'm just like in the house by myself. So I just start drinking just double shot of Everclear, bam. You know, do another one a couple minutes later, bam, starting to feel pretty good. Do another one, do another one. But I'm thinking like five or six of those double shots to where all of a sudden I, I walked into my bedroom and the presence of, it was just, it was, it was the most obvious thing. Nobody had to tell me nothing. I walked into the presence of death and I knew, oh, uh oh, there's something in here. It's, there's an entity in my room and I know exactly what he's here to do. So I just like, Jesus, please forgive me for my sins. I just say I knew I was dying. I knew I wasn't living right. I knew where I was going. And I said it real fast. Jesus, please forgive me for my sin. And I think I'm on the word sin where I'm dropped. I'm just flying downwards through a tunnel. And this thing had my back that whatever that was in my bedroom that I never looked at ever because I never seen it. And I never looked behind me to see it either. But that thing had a hold of me like a rag doll. And it was huge. There's no point in finding it. So I'm just flying through hell. I know, flying through a tunnel. I didn't have enough time to think about, oh, this is hell or nothing. I'm just, my eyes are just like full of what, the, looking around, you know what I mean? Like at this tunnel and there's people chained each side of the tunnel, the first section I go to and they're screaming and I'm downloading everybody's thoughts. Like if I flew by you at the speed of light, when I fly by you, I know everything about you. I know more about you than you know about you. Like that. And if there's a million people that I flew by right away at the speed of light and I just flew by them, I would know everything about every one of them more than they know themselves without trying. 
so you get transported down this tunnel and did you land? Where did you arrive? What happened after? Because you got somewhere. The first thing is like they're yelling out. They're like looking behind me. They're yelling out to the death angel guy. I'm going to keep calling it death angel, right? That's what I think it is. And I don't really care to be perfect on it, but whatever. <laughs> death angel, let's say. So they're, they're yelling, let me out. I'm a Christian. They're thinking I'm a Christian as he passes by them. You know what I mean? And so that was kind of a trip to see that. And then bam, we just stopped. You know how like a UFO can be like, er, or whatever? Yeah. It was like that, and it, it didn't do nothing to me. It didn't hurt me or nothing. And I'm just looking at this huge line of people, and I'm reading their thoughts and stuff. It was They're wearing all sorts of different type of clothing. You got people from Adam and Eve's day all the way up until 2020 or whatever. I, you know, whatever year it was when I went there. Um, different clothes. You got Americans. You got Asians. You got, you got full nine yards. But what's happening is this one dude that got my attention, this white boy, I went right into his trance and I'm looking down with his hands and his arms and he's a little boy. And as soon as I see what's going on, I freak out like, ah, like I don't want to see that. And so I immediately close my eyes and I want out and I get out. Like it was just like that. Right. But the, the split second I was in there, I felt everything that he felt. And he was, it was a tournament. He was not enjoying himself. He was like, stop. He can't stop. He cannot stop like molesting this little boy, but it's not really happening. It's in his head, but it's totally real to him. It's just, there's no difference that he can tell. It's just like, he's over and over and over for eternity. He's not going to be able to stop. And he's not enjoying it like you did on earth at all. So hell is not the party that some people make it to be. Oh, there's no party. There's zero enjoyment. Nobody goes there and they think that that's even okay. The toughest Satan worshiper guy that goes there is just going to cry like a little girl. The toughest one on the planet is going to just fall and beg to get out. And he ain't ever getting it out. And talking about never getting out, can you feel time pass? Was there a sense of time as we know it? or Because it's hard to wrap mm -hmm. our heads with what eternity is like or what it feels like. Yeah, um, I could totally tell about time. It says time flies when you're having fun. Uh, when I was in hell, time was slowed down. But I couldn't, I didn't know that when I was experiencing it, right? So, anyways, the whole hell experience to me, I felt like four days. When I came back, it was like from noon to 4 p.m. So Whoa, okay. it was like four hours. Okay. So what happened after that? So there was the first episode with that one guy that you spot, then you started heading somewhere else. Yeah. Right. So then then the death angel or whatever yanks me. He's pushing me towards this. It looks like a beautiful castle underground. It's like white, like pearly, like really beautiful castle. And as I'm going up to it, it's got like King Arthur's court type door, dude, like wood, right? And it had like, you know, that, the, uh, I would say like that thing in the bull's nose, uh, yeah, that yeah. ring the or whatever in the bull's nose. It mm -hmm. had two of those for the doors. And as we're, as he shoved me towards the door, they open themselves and it's really beautifully bright. And then when I come in past the brightness, I'm just looking down a long hallway and jail cells on each side. And I come to know just like all this information in the spirit, you'll, you'll just get this information to where you have no question about it. And it's really hard to explain to somebody who hasn't been in the, in the spirit world. How did you know that? Who told you that, you know, or whatever. And it's just like, bro, you don't get it. You, there's, you don't have any questions. Everything is solid information and you just get it. And you don't know how you're getting it, but you know, it's not something to question. You just know it's a fact. And so I come to know that this is the section in, of hell where people, if you're like a false leader, false prophet, you've led many people to hell because you led them away from the salvation of Jesus Christ. Anything else, any other religion, if it's not Jesus is the way to heaven, then you're screwing them over. And this is the section for people who are screwing people over. If you had a big following and people came to hell because you said, hey, this is the way to God, or that's the way to God, you're, you got, this is your castle, you get you get, you get what you asked for. Did you know who these people were? Like you get all this information downloaded into your head. Could you tell who they were or did you just yeah. have no idea? If I, I guess, I, well, I didn't, I get information I want to know. So if I wondered about, hey, I wonder what color the roof is up there. I would have got that information. But as I'm passing these strangers I've never seen before, I'm not wondering nothing about none of them. I'm just, I'm scared about where I'm going. I'm thinking about myself. You know what I mean? So Right, because this this death angel is still leading you. Like you're not you don't have control over where you're going. Yeah, I had I had no control. You feel like a little gnat. You just you have no power. You're screwed and you can't do nothing about it. So, anyways, but one dude got my attention 
as I was passing, I remember I looked to the left, there's jail cells, but they're all like, they, there's no door on the jail. So like they could walk out, but none of them are. They're in there, they're, like I said, wearing all sorts of different clothes. I think I saw a monk looking dude, you know what I mean? But like, I, I didn't pay attention. I, I was, I just saw him. I didn't like stop to wonder about, there was nothing that grabbed my attention too much to where I got any information out of him. But this one dude I passed, Reminded me of like Abraham Lincoln type of clothing, like 1800s type of, you know, like colonial days or something. You know what I mean? So when that got my attention, then I went into this guy's trance. What what happened when you got the information about that guy? Just the, the way he looked, bro, the clothes and everything. Just kind of like instead of me looking at him, looking right away like I did everybody else. When I looked at him, I kind of was like, what the heck? And then that's what got me. And then, I, then as my attention kind of like beeline towards him, just because he just looked kind of, there was familiarity there. Um, I went right into his, into his head. Like he's sitting there with his eyes closed. He's just mumbling something too. You know what I mean? And I go right into his trance or whatever. I keep on calling it a trance, but they're like, they can't tell this ain't totally real. So it's not like cartoon land or nothing. It's, it looks, it's convincing. So I go right into his trance and we're both standing outside and beautiful sunny day, birds chirping and, and I look over at him and he's kicking and he's like with his foot, dude, he's going like this on the grass. And I was just kind of like, where are we? What? You know, like all of a sudden we're not in hell no more. Right. All of a sudden we're like on a nice sunny day on a lawn. So I thought that was kind of good news for a second. You know what I mean? And he's over there and I, and all of a sudden his, it's like telepathic dude. Like I heard his thoughts. So he's, he's feeling deja vu. What I would describe as deja vu, like I've been here before or something is like suspect, you know what I mean? And he's and he's testing to see if the grass is like real grass. And and then he's like, thinks just like you would be thinking. He didn't really look at me. He's just thinking I'm home. I'm on my, on my lawn. I'm home. And okay. so I'm like, oh, we're at this dude's house, you know? And so that just kind of makes me go look the direction he's looking. And we're looking at a two, kind of a plain house. It was kind of square, two stories. Reminded me of a barn because, like, it was just pretty plain. But he's looking up at it and he's thinking, I'm home. And he starts, ta- he starts either speed walking or jogging. I don't know what he did, but he starts taking off towards the, towards the house. And I'm looking at the house, and all of a sudden, I hear this noise, a commotion up at the top story of the house. And it's something not good. I just know something not good, something, something sinister about what's going on up there. It's like you hear, like, it's like a growling type of weird language or something, is what I'm hearing. And I'm here and it's like a fresh, there's frustration going on up there. Right. So I'm like, Oh, what's up with that? And then I, I get picked up and I start flying towards, I'm off my feet and I'm getting taken right to the wall of this, of the, the top story of the house. And I, and I braced for impact and I went blind and everything was dark. And then I went deaf and it was like, I don't I want to say piercing silence. It just was so deaf. And then all of a sudden I could see, and I could hear, and I just kind of realized, oh, man, that's what it's like going through a wall. You can't see, you can't hear for a second, you know. And so anyways, now I'm in the top story. And um, I'm looking at two two demonic looking animal creatures, alligator looking face. Like they, they look like Hunchback of Notre Dame, but really extreme to the point where it looks, they almost look like a snail. They both look like kind of the same alligator type snail type hunchback. Just evil, wicked looking things, man. Just never seen nothing so sick looking. It, it's hard to look at, you know what I mean? And they got this language that they're talking with drool and uh, I can't even I can't even uh do an impersonation of it that, that would give you the effect that would even come close. And you can understand what they're saying, can you? Um no and yes. So, like for for instance, I understand as they're talking, I'm not getting like the sentence interpreted for me at all. Plus, I don't know that language at all. But I know what their problem is. I know they're frustrated. I know I know it's because they want this dude to come upstairs. And I know that they're talking about how to do it. So the words are kind of like not really important, but you understand the idea of what's being communicated. To the, to the point where I don't need to know what the words are. Okay. And what were they talking about? They were like uh, anxious. And you can you can feel the stuff off them too. So they're they're wanting this thing to get on the show to get on the road, basically. And I know that they want the guy to come inside the house. And I thought he'd be in the house by now because he was kind of like jogging towards it. But they're still, they're just like, like, what do we do type of conversation. So I go to look towards where the stairs are, where, where I think that the guy would have ran up to the side of the house. And um, I'm, I somehow or another, I can still see this. I, I can totally see the wall, but I can also, I can do both. I can see through the wall and I can see the guy outside. Plus I can see the wall. 
And neither one of those had to compromise each other. They both were running at the same time. I have no idea how you would even make that in a movie. I don't know how you would f figure out how to show somebody that, but that's what was happening. So I'm able to look at the guy and he has stopped at the door and he's got that deja vu. Something's not right. He's afraid to come in. He's not fully convinced that it's his house. He's not fully convinced that it's safe. He's not fully convinced that he's probably that he's out of hell. Of course, his thoughts were, were just real general, like fear. He just, he won't go in the house and it's just, I'm just picking up on, he's afraid. So anyways, and that's what these growling alligator demon things. So one of them, like, they, he's like looking like this, dude. And just like on a movie, bro, just like, like, oh, it just gives me chills, dude. Just even picturing it. It's, I don't know if you ever seen anybody that was demon possessed and they just look hollow. They look like they're looking right through you. That's because these demons are inside of them. You're seeing the, the eyes of those things, you know what I mean? And those, that's how those things look. And he was just like, he was looking right through me. And he, te and he telepathically asked me to call the guy upstairs. And my, re my reaction was also telepathic. I, I didn't mean to. I just thought, I ain't helping you. And he immediately looked back at the other one. And then they both start coming up with a plan. And it's like, and I'm just kind of like, that's a trip, dude. He just spoke into my head. You know what I mean? And it was it sounded, it sounded like my voice in my head. Same thing as when I think and I wake up and I'm like, oh, let's make coffee or anything I'm thinking. And it's kind of in my voice in my head in English. That's He was able to do that to me with my, using my voice in my head. But then they they start to uh, they start to call out. So, as, so like they're, they're wanting help. They're getting they're getting support. They're getting help. So they end up calling like this this gross noise that they make it's a demonic i'd say it's a uh it's a like a wannabe speaking in tongues or something so then they like call out and this black thing comes through the wall and it looks it looks square it looked like a shape it was about maybe that big kind of like if you folded up a bandana or something you know what i mean or maybe two pairs of socks that type of size um kind of like that and it looks square like it's like a hole or whatever but it's a thing and it comes through the wall, and every and as it's coming through, I realize that the ground is just a huge, like a crater, like that wide. But it goes straight down, like every everywhere this thing moves on the floor, it's eating up the floor, and it's just destruction, fully all the way through the floor, through the earth, through the ground. Keep going, it never, it's just like destroying everything where it goes. So I, I kind of step back, and this thing starts to spin, like it reminded me of that cartoon Tasmanian Devil. I've said that before. But it starts to spin and gets pretty and bright and gets bigger. And next thing you know, you're looking at a giant golden looking angel looking thing. No wings. Can't tell if it's a guy or a girl. But you want to say guy. But the fact is, it's so pretty that you want to say girl. There was something about it that was so enticing. It was like, oh, don't look at that. Something weird's going on with me. Like, you know what I mean? Looking at this thing. There's just something, something demonic about it, dude. So... Anyways, this thing is is 12 foot tall, I want to say. You know, it's about like like if my dad st stood on his own head, you know, my dad's six foot tall, I'm thinking that's how big it is, right? So like 12 foot tall, no wings, all gold though, dude. Like gold eyes, everything was gold, right? But different shades of gold. So the eyes would be like, you could see that it had darker for the pupils and or whatever, but it would be like different shades and stuff. And that's how that happened. And it, it uh, comes in. And then it tells the two alligator demon things, which were hella small, way smaller than it, right? Tells them to kick rocks. It gives them, I don't know what it says to them. I don't understand the language, but I know that it told them a task to go do. So this thing was more of a sergeant and these things were more little peons or whatever, right? It's because it told them what to do and they quickly obeyed it and they took off through the wall. And so now I'm looking at this thing and it doesn't look at me. That one demon that looked at me and spoke to me in my head that was the only time I was acknowledged by anything while I was down there. Other than that, it was like I was just a fly on the wall. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, and I was afraid that this thing would look at me and see me because it was big and it looked like it could tear you up. But um, it never looked at me. It sits there and all of a sudden, now it's by itself with me and the death angel, obviously. And it calls out to call this guy to come inside and to come upstairs. And when it calls out, it's like this beautiful, beautiful music. It's like a music slash voice but slash instrument like not an organ not a flute not not any of those things but an air an air instrument that's doper than any of them that you've never heard before 
So we're going to call it whatever. But it's <laughs> like its chest would just was vibrating and you could tell that it has some bit, pipes or whatever built into it, just like Ezekiel or whatever talks about. Well, that's what, that's what I'm looking at and I'm watching it work. But I don't, uh, at the time, I'm not, I'm not putting Ezekiel together. I'm just, I'm just yeah, yeah. watching it. Like I'm watching a freaking movie and I'm not really, I'm not really going, oh, that's this or that. I'm not doing any of that, figuring it out. I'm just kind of like totally scared. Cause I know, I, I, I remember that I just was in hell. So I'm not tricked like this guy thinking he's at his house again. I'm thinking this is, we're in your trance, bro. But he don't know. It's too convincing for him. Um. So anyways, as it calls out this beautiful noise, boom, I hear the door slam open and I hear, he's just trucking up the stairs and he lands right on his face, dude, just to start worshiping this thing. And I real and I realize I get this information. Okay. And the information is he's seen it before. That wasn't the first time he heard that, that instrument voice thing okay so there was familiarity there and there was safety there and there was comfort there and he starts worshiping this thing on his face and so this giant golden thing i could discern that it was totally fake what he was doing to the guy but he kind of picks him up and talks real sweet to him and, and stands him up and so he goes like this with his arm and the whole house that we're looking at the inside of the house we're looking at the inside of the walls disappears and now you're looking at a sea of people like we're at freaking Woodstock bro like just a sea of people just goes out forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and then and then the golden angel looking thing walks them up to the edge and then kind of like hey preach to them give them the message I gave to you and so then it steps back and I'm watching both of them dude and it steps back and it holds up his arms like this oh you can't see in the camera but he's holding floating hieroglyphs, just like Egyptian hieroglyphs off, off, you know what I mean? Off National Geographic, bro. I've never been to Egypt, but those hieroglyphs do look the same. Looks exactly the same, and they're floating, and there's like six of them. And so the guy starts to, the guy's over here, like facing away from both of us, and he's on the edge, and he's speaking to this crowd like he's preaching. And I remember I could feel how he felt, and it was, he felt like somebody. It was almost like he was feeling like he was getting worshipped. You know what I mean? That that glory, that self, that glory that man is getting from man. He was he was eating that up. He liked it. And I thought that was pretty weird because I, I just don't relate to that type of sin. You know what I mean? There's sins that I do relate to, but I just ain't that. And, and he was just, you know, anyways, he's enjoying it. And he's just speaking to this crowd. And he really liked to be seen. And he liked to speak. And he liked to be on the pedestal. And he liked to be in the spotlight. He liked it all. But as But anyways, as he's starting to speak, these hieroglyphs that the, the golden angel is holding up, they're floating in the air. So as the dude starts to speak, one, one of them would light up and it would flip. And it didn't go, you know how when you read left to right, this was going the other direction. So the one on the angel's left hand would light up and then go to the, the one next over. It was going backwards for some reason. Okay. So anyways, it's just like, boom. And then after he would, after he's speaking, it would flip and it would be a totally different hieroglyph on the other side. And they have to start back over, start back over, start as the guy's talking and talking and talking. And I don't really understand this English the guy is saying. It's not anything that's going in as far as information that I'm able to perceive. I don't, so it's kind of like, all I know is he's telling them the message that the angel told them to tell them, but I'm not myself hearing the message at all. And all of a sudden, I realized that the golden angel starts smiling. And just like the Grinch dude on that cartoon, bro, it just got wicked, wicked long. And just his face just starts distorting all evil like the Grinch. And his spit, I remember seeing his spit and his, he had sharp teeth. And it was like, as his mouth opened up, the spit was gold and like a different shade of gold, but it's like clear gold. And I'm just like, ah, what is this? You know? And, uh, and then as I'm looking at that, I start hearing somebody's cussing out the, the preaching dude. So I hear somebody cussing at him, right? From the crowd? Yeah, from the crowd. I start hearing a custom coming from the crowd and it's like quiet and I only heard one. And then I heard, next thing you know, it's like getting louder and louder and louder. And I'm hearing all of them. And they're saying stuff like, a lot of cuss words I don't want to say here, but it's basically like, come down. Like, you're the reason that we're in hell, you big fat liar. Come down here so we can knock you out, beat you up and make you pay. And you're so stupid, you're going to preach to us that same lie that you told us when we were on earth and you think we're going to buy it. So just a bunch of, a bunch of people saying that in many different ways, basically. And can he hear that? Do you know if he, he could hear it? 
Yeah, to the point where he stops, he stops preaching. He stops and his whole demeanor on his face changes. And then like I'm the whole time I'm connected with this guy. And and so I like what he's thinking, I can hear in my in my mind basically. Or it's like it becomes my thought, parallel with my thoughts somehow. But it's like it's like all of a sudden he realizes, uh-oh, I'm not at no crowd preaching to all these people like I like I did back on earth or whatever. Because he got distracted a little bit, started getting having a little bit of fun when he first thought he was going to really be be somebody, a superstar up there, right? So he got distracted from, you know, because he started out thinking that something was up, and then he got distracted, and now he's back to, uh-oh, something. He stops, but he he stops talking altogether, and his eyes just get real big, and he starts looking like fear on his face as he's hearing the whole crowd. He can hear everything they're saying, and they're, tell, they're telling him, come down here, we're going to tear you into pieces you idiot telling us that same bull crap, you know, but it was all cussing is what I was hearing. So anyways, as that's happening, I see the, um, I'm, I'm just watching the whole thing. Like I'm looking back and forth and at the angel, I'm looking at the dude looking at the crowd. I'm looking back, you know, like I'm just trying to take in the whole scene. And, um, it's like all of a sudden it starts shaking to where I think I remember like either a plate or a picture or, or something fell kind of guy scared me right so i'm i'm immediately wanting to be out of the house and as soon as i get scared and i want out i just get sucked up like i'm the moon and i'm looking down on both the angel and the preaching guy and the whole crowd and it's a sea of people as far as you can see all around this this thing and the house is falling apart like basically the wizard of oz cartoon or movie or whatever you know what i mean okay so he's he's in the house and he's still preaching to these people, right? Or because I, I lost a little bit of what, what was happening. So he was preaching to the sea of people. They got mad at him. He realized it. Then he stopped. Then yep. what happened right after that? And then I noticed, <laughs> and then I noticed that from the back of the crowd starts to part. And it was like those, the, uh, it starts to part all the way up to the front. And it was like those two alligator demons that took off because the, the angel. That golden angel gave him a task, right? They ended up coming back and they come from the back of the crowd, come up to the front and they were holding the hands of this guy's kids. And the one that stood out was like a girl and a young girl. And she even had a teddy bear and a, and a dress. And she looks up at him and she says, daddy, why did you lie to us? And then um, the dude, the, the, false prophet guy or whatever from the top down gets hit with hopelessness and regret and i start gagging like i'm gonna puke uh it was such strong hopelessness that the idea when he realized that he's in hell his family's in hell and he's never getting out the realization of that came back to him and then and it hit him like a ton of bricks coming from the top down so as that's happening i'm over here gagging 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 and then it's like all of a sudden everything changes and we're back on his grass again. And I'm just standing there with him and I look over and he's checking out the grass to see if it's real all over again. So like Groundhog's Day kind of thing. Oh, yeah, exactly. So that's like his torment is they they trick him into thinking he's not in hell so they can drop the guilt on him again, drop the bad news on him again. So after I see that this thing is starting over again, all of a sudden I come back out. I don't know how I did it. Like the death angel yanked me out or something. I don't know. But now I'm back in the hallway of this castle looking at the jail cell, looking at the dude, and he starts shoving me down the hall. And now it's like we're going to a darker section. We're going to something else that's getting dark. And like the, the, we don't look like we're in a castle no more, starting to look like more rocky, like under earth type of terrain or whatever. And somehow or another, I realized the next section is where I go, the very next section. And I just start freaking out. Like I didn't have a lot of time to really dig in my heels or to say anything. It's just like, as soon as I realized, oh no, the next section's my section. And I started to resist. It got really bright light. It was like Jesus came and picked me up, dude. Like I was a toddler. Like, okay, I don't know how I'm going to be able to show you, bro. But it's like, he came down. Like if I was this tall, it was like Jesus came down and grabbed me under my feet to where my head's up on his chest because he's bending down, right? He okay. just yanked me from underneath my feet and just pulled me right up out. But I know, I know to this day that it was Jesus. It was, you know, he's the light. You know what I mean? And he's the light of salvation, man. 
so he picked you up and then did he bring you somewhere else? What happened? Just just gets real bright. And then all of a sudden I'm just I'm picking myself up off my floor in my house. And I'm not with Jesus. I'm not with the death angel. I'm not with nobody. I'm just picking myself up off the floor. And I'm just like traumatized. And uh, my ex-wife, she she come through the door and I'm just like, I slam the door right in her face. Just like, get away from me. And I'm just like, I just went to hell. And I'm just like, ah, like, uh, I'm freaking out. I've never been freaking out that much before or since, but I'm just like shaking. I just can't believe what just happened to me because it was definitely not anybody who says this was a dream or it was in my head. The only reason why you think that is you, you were there. It's because you lack, you lack information. That's what makes you be able to think that it was just a vision or a dream or so or he hit his head. If, um, if it happened to you, what happened to me, you wouldn't think that for one second that it wasn't a real place that you're really at physically. There was nothing more real to you than, than this. It, it, it was more real than you and me talk. It was more of a reality than this. So a dream is more foggy than this is as clear as we get. This was more clear. This was in the afterlife. It would make this, what we're doing right now, would be kind of a dreamland compared to it. This would be questionable compared to that. So people say that, oh, it might have been a dream or, or, or you, it was the drugs or something. I've done all the drugs. I know what hallucinating is like. You, you don't hallucinate off methadone. You never do. You don't hallucinate off methadone and Everclear. You never do. I've been doing all this stuff my whole life. You never, ever do. This, this is like, I really died and I really went there. And I know it. And when you die and you ask Jesus if I'm full of crap, he'll go, nope. It is what it is. Yeah. And you there's probably I mean? a lot of people that are calling you a liar. There's probably people that maybe not everyone's selling into your face, but there's a lot of people that think that. But for you, this, like, you know, because you went there, it's, it's something that no one can ever take our personal experiences away from us. Right. And that's what you're saying. It's like, even if you think I'm a liar, I don't care because I know that this happened. I know that I've lived it and I'm going to tell that story. And I've like, I've heard your story before and everything checks out. Like everything that you said is the exact same thing, just in different words than I've heard prior in, in you telling the story. And what I tell people is that if someone is lying, they're going to get caught up in their lie. Right. But it's consistent what you're saying. So even if I don't know, I wasn't there. Right. But I trust enough in what you're saying that it's consistent enough for me to believe that it was true. And the passion that you have and the details in which you're able to tell the story to me is amazing. I'm getting nothing. out of it. I'm not selling a book. I'm not trying to get nobody to donate nothing to me or nothing. I'm not only am I not getting nothing positive out of it, I'm getting negatives out of it. I got people who are threatening me, people who are calling me names, people that are mad about what I'm doing. Not to mention every time I do like a podcast or something, I haven't done that many, but I'm just saying, or or at church, I go to tell my testimony. Every time I get major attack, uh, fighting with my wife, um, things, my car breaks. I, I have, I have in the natural, I have bad things happen to me before and after Anytime I tell the truth about this. So that's a, that's not a win for me. Plus, I get people mad, calling me names. Plus, it takes my time out of my day, which I could be out on my dirt bike right now. You know what I mean? So it's, it's a negative, 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 and not one thing that I'm going to get good out of it ever, unless maybe when I get into heaven, Jesus gives me a fist bump or something. You know what I mean? The whole thing is sacrifice. There's no reason for you to make this up. Definitely not making it up. If anybody doesn't believe me, they don't know what they're talking about. It's really what happened. The only reason why I'm telling it is because for so long I didn't tell it. And the and the Holy Ghost convicted me, bro, of not telling it. And and I didn't see no benefit in it, so I didn't do it. You know what I mean? And plus, yeah. I was talking about it would cause me problems. I, I the first time I ever talked about this, the, the morning before, I wake up to hearing it sounds like human voices curse making curses all over me like stop cody kill cody destroy like all these negative chants and it was like i was i sat up and i'm up for like a 30 seconds you could count and i still hear all these voices and and what i think that was is like witches all around the area or something who who somehow they know to pray this stuff over me that somehow because the demonic letting them know or whatever but it sounded like human voices dude and they're all 
they're all trying to stop. They're all cursing me, cursing me, cursing me. So I got that happening before I tell it. Then I get up to tell it and something grabs my vocal cords to where I embarrass myself. I can't even really talk like I am right now. And then as I push through on stage, sounding like, looking like an idiot, like choking constantly, I have some religious dude that was all dressed up, starts yelling at me about how, uh, how I'm dressed and how I shouldn't be, I, I, I'm in no position to be representing Jesus at all. And that I, I I had no business being there. So I got I got this bad cursing thing going on when I wake up that morning. I got this Mexican dude like embarrassing me and calling me names while I'm on stage. Plus I get my throat grabbed. Plus that night when I go home, this is the first time I've ever told this thing to anybody. It was the first time. Plus, plus I'm getting like the fact that I gotta tell it, I'm reliving it kind of. And I'm getting my own kind of traumatic to where I'm not, I don't know, having a good day. I don't feel good about it or nothing. Right. So I got to where this is like a hard subject. This messes me up thinking about it, talking about it. Right. So I got that. And then I'm laying in bed with my ex-wife. She passed out and this entity come in. I didn't see it, but I could feel it. And it came to the foot of my bed and it stood there until I fell asleep. And as soon as I fell asleep, this thing grabbed me and he slammed my head up into the ceiling. And I, my, I felt my brain. I felt my skull explode. My brain exploded out. My neck broke. And it yelled in my face and it was like I was on a crotch rocket, bro. It yelled all the skin off my face and ripped all my skin off my face. And he said, I'm going to stop you. And then he slammed me into my bed and broke all my bones and everything and slammed me into the headboard. And I woke up and I hadn't even moved. I was still, I just laying in my bed like a normal person. But I had, but in, but the thing that was at the foot of my bed before I went to sleep was gone. So that, that, that coward evil spirit thing with loser right comes to the waits till i'm asleep because he can't do he really has no power he's defeated right comes to the foot of my bed and, and waits there for me to go to sleep so he could traumatize me in my dream which as soon as i realized it was a dream i don't care about it it was like that's nothing burger it didn't really happen you know what i mean but that's all they got you know what i mean but so it's like the whole thing is bad from the beginning to the end me talking about this testimony yeah. And you don't get anything out of it. I think it's important to repeat that. Like you, dude, you don't get anything out of this. You only get negative. And yet you still tell your story. And the reason you tell your story is to warn people, I imagine, right? Because you don't want them to go through the same thing that you did. Yeah. That's, that'd be messed up if I know that they're going there and I don't tell them that's screwed up. That, that is where then all of a sudden I got, now God has a problem with me. It's amazing. I thank you so much for telling your story. It takes a lot of courage to do that. And I want to ask you because this is this is not something that you go through every day. This is not something most people are going to go through in their life. But it's such a traumatic, powerful experience. I imagine it changed who you were after you came out. Like, so what was that transformation? Um, went went deeper into it. Went deeper into drugs. Went deeper into darkness. And I know that's going to surprise everybody, but this is exactly what happened. When I come back and I'm on my carpet, this is what I think. I've just seen where I go the next time my heart stops. I could not stand to be awake or sober, especially both at once. And I would check my, I would always be like this, man, check my heart, bro. Just like, all the time, all the time for 10 years, bro. I'm just like, oh my God, oh my God, what if I die? Oh, I'm going to hell, I'm going to hell. Like just torment, full torment. I didn't understand until way later why I ended up getting saved out of there, why I had a second chance. But eventually you got to that point. Eventually you got to understand that there is forgiveness and it took some time, but you got there. My, my father-in-law so. told me, he said, as hard as you going after my daughter and she's saying, no, no, no. And you're still going after her. Don't you think that's how hard Jesus is going to go after you, but harder. Don't you think he's got more and more love than you got? He got more tenacity than you got. And I, and, it, and that just blew my mind. And for the first time in 15 years, I thought, wait a minute. You mean I don't have to go to hell when I die? It's the first time I even thought about it like that at all. And then that's when the change happened. That's when I start cold turkey and all the drugs and I start going through withdrawals and I don't care. I don't care what I got to go through. I'm getting Jesus back. I want him. I'm getting him. He wants me. I heard. That's what it started. It took you a while, but you got there eventually. And that's, that's a good ending of the story. But there's also another part that I want to talk about because that guy that you saw in the house, in his front lawn. Something happened after when you woke up and yeah. you learned who that guy was. Yeah, so uh, now we're talking about my ex-father-in-law. This is back when I'm still kind of in that first marriage or whatever. 
it was a, maybe a year or two after I had went to hell. He shows me, his, he heard about the, he, I told him pretty much what I told you, only a, lo, a way longer version, right? Um, he One day, he, we're at Elk Grove, and he passes me his laptop, and it's a picture of the house that I saw when I was in hell. And I'm just like, dude! And I look at him, I'm like, that's the house I saw in hell! And he's like smiling, he's like, I know. And he's like, scroll down. And he had it all set up for me. He uh, He's a whiz, right? So he had it all set up. I scroll down, and I'm like, those are the kids. That's, that's, those are the, that, you know, cause they're all, they're all like dressed like the, it's, it's the same looking stuff. And then even if I can't even see their faces in my spirit, I know for a fact without question, there is no need to question. I'll take it to the bank. So I, I know, I know that that's the house. I know, I, I know that that, you know, it doesn't have to be in color for me to really, well, well, there's no question. So if anybody else is question, you know, it's like, I don't care what you're doing. I, I, I know. And that's, that's all, all I care about is if I know. And so it's like, those are the kids. And he's like, scroll down. And I scroll down and I, lo and behold, that's the dude. I know that dude better than his mom. I was able for four hours at least read his mind, read his thoughts, knew what he was afraid of, knew what he felt like. When I knew that. And I felt like how he felt when he was on stage preaching, how he, he really liked it or whatever, all that. But anyways, that man was Joseph Smith, the guy who started the Mormon church. I found, that, I found all this out later. I, had, I got nothing against Mormons. Uh, I got nothing. I would have much rather have uh, spotted Buddha or, 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 or Gandhi or I don't know. These are names that I'm familiar with. When you say Joseph Smith, it's a nothing burger. I'm like, who's that? You know what I mean? But my father-in-law explained to me who it was and who I saw. And then I ended up moving to Idaho, you know, for heaven's sake. I guess there's a lot of Mormons here. So it, now it kind of makes sense. But I was like, dude, I would have much rather have seen somebody who I think is intriguing. If I was going to make something up and, oh, I saw somebody in hell, I would have definitely picked anybody else. I wouldn't have picked this guy. You didn't even know who Joseph Smith was. No, they, no, no nothing. I, it was, there was no relation to me and Mormonism. There was, there was, had no history at all. And so anyways, but he explains to me who it is and, I, and that's who it was. And I, and I know Joseph Smith, Smith better than his own mom. And Joseph Smith died way before I was even born. But I know, I know him better than anybody. Nobody knows him as, as good as I know him. And that's just a fact. It's what it is. I know that pisses a lot yeah. of people off probably, but it's just too bad, you know? Yeah, and for the people that don't know the story of Joseph Smith, you know, the claims that, that he wrote and is that he got visited by an angel, an angel of light that gave him these tablets. And I'm not like an expert on it. I'm just giving a real brief summary. But that he got these tablets and this was the only true religion and every other Christian was wrong. And so he started teaching that. Yeah. And you saw the the hieroglyphs that the angel was holding. Isn't that crazy? So yeah, it, it checks out with everything that's it's the story that he told is the same story you're telling. I still ha honestly, I still have not opened up the Book of Mormon and read anything that he's talking about. I've just heard just like how I'm hearing you tell it. I've kind of heard a brief little version of sees a golden something angel thing and tell gives him a message or tablets. And I uh, heard something about burying him on South Park or whatever, right? Seeing that cartoon. But um, I still know nothing about him. Not really interested in about it, honestly. But if people ask me who I saw in hell, that's who I saw. That's, that's where he's at. And after everything you've gone through, if you had to go back and give a message to, to someone that's in a similar situation to what you were in, what would you say? If you're breathing right now, there's zero chance that you're unsavable. There's no such thing as that. I believed it and I found out it's bull crap. You know what I mean? So that's the only thing I got out of it. And I think it's, you know, maybe it's pretty simple, but it's huge for me. It changed my life. Uh, realizing that, realizing that that's, dang, Jesus's love is unfathomable. How I would never, you know what I mean? Like my patience is so thin with people. Like I can't put up with a whole lot of anything. And the fact that he would, he would strive with me pull me out of hell, keep me alive through all the years after that of me still, you know, li living the way I was living or whatever. And it's just, it's just like, if your heart's beating, there's no such thing as you being unsavable, period. And if you, and if you don't believe that, you're just wrong. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Almost False Podcast. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more interviews like this. If you found this content valuable, please share it with a friend. It really helps us out a lot and hopefully it will help them too. If you want to be on the show, you can go to almostfalls.net and submit your story there. We would love to hear from you. With that being said, I hope you have a great rest of your day and stay blessed.